Hi, I'm Becca Pin, and you're watching Rappler. So we are six months into different degrees of coronavirus lockdown, and we still want to find out, like, how is the entertainment industry doing during this truly unprecedented time? So today, we're talking to an actress who I personally may be biased about because aside from her work on CAM, I, in the words of millennials and Gen Zers, I stand what she stands for both online and in real life. So please help me welcome Miss Ria Ataide. Hello. Love it. That's so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, hindi kita winarin dun sa introduction ko when, when we were yeah, off camera. But, but yeah, so it, it's a very weird time. Obviously, we are talking to each other while staring at the computer screen. So, um, how are you? I'm okay. Um, I feel like I've learned to manage everything. Um, if anything, I'm really grateful I get to do work pa rin. Mm-hmm. Because without that, I feel like my mental state and emotional state would probably be going haywire already. But it came at the right time, so I'm okay. Like right. I'm managing, coping. Right. I mean, because it's it's obviously been a very difficult time for everyone, and especially for people who have who are who work for, work with, or or have an affinity towards ABS-CBN. Because obviously, um, the network is denied a franchise. So can you just walk us through briefly, lang? Like, how did you deal with that? On a personal level, how did I deal with that? I felt like my dissent had to be heard. Yeah. That uh, I, f- how do you? It was more of just me letting out my thoughts about it because I feel like that was important, not only as a release for myself, but also for those who couldn't speak up on it. Yeah, not about self righteous or anything. Uh, it's right. just like it's what felt right for me, and that's how I dealt with it. You know, till, till now, though, there's still, like, remnants of that, of course. It's not completely gone, gone yet. But day by day, step right. by step. Great. Okay, I'm going to jump ahead because because I, I walked th- through the questions I was going to ask today. But I'm going to jump ahead and ask, like, when you do voice out on social media, are there ever moments where you or, or your team would be like, Teka, Ria, parang baka parang quiet muna tayo or maybe... Maybe leave it on drafts, Muna, or something like that. Oh, of course. <laughs> Especially with my parents. Like, they get so right. worried about me. But I always say, na parang, this is how I want to deal with things. And I'm an adult. I'm able to handle the consequences of it. If it means people questioning me as an artist and saying I'm making epa lang, I already know my sincerity and for them to question that, it's like, okay, go ahead. I know what's going on in my heart and in my head anyway. And um, I also find myself stopping myself sometimes when it like when I see something that I say, and I'm like, oh, okay, we're going overboard. <laughs> like, yeah, so now I'm trying to deal with it again with more sarcasm than like right. direct. Yeah, right. let's deal with really? it. You know, like, it's din yun, sometimes sarcasm doesn't quite translate online. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, indeed. Okay. Um. Anyway, so so you know, like when the the network was denied the franchise, everyone was wondering, oh, what's gonna happen na to to ABS-CBN and its roster of talents? And then of course, Star Magic announced na you know we're not gonna hold back our artists, but we're gonna we're not just gonna allow them, but we're gonna encourage them to to seek work um where they can find it, whether it be on other networks and. And on on their own platforms, did that surprise you at all? Um, no, because I know the nature of their work and their vision is for our embetterment as people anyway. So, parang it would only make sense. And I mean, even from the beginning of the whole franchise issue, our bosses we were blessed enough to have the ABS-CBN bosses like hold our hand through it, really talk okay. us through it. Uh, manage, help us manage our expectations and all of that. So, if anything, I'm just really grateful that right now we're at the point. Well, also, it's a pandemic. Now it's in the time for network war. Really, everybody's trying to get by. So, parang like okay, a lot of people are questioning the people who have like moved networks already. Right. Dude, these people are just trying to get by. Like work is work. Uh, right. Who would know the blessings at a time like this, diba? Right. And I'm just glad that um, the network has been very supportive about it and Star Magic, of course. Right, right. Because people, I think, sometimes glamorize um, loyalty or, or, or they, they, they think that it's as if seeking work or using your talents to find work 
elsewhere or wherever you can find it. it parang kasalanan mo pa or something like that. Yeah, well, I guess right. that you also can't blame the people because they're so like used to the competition right. among the networks. So feeling nila na if you move to another network, that automatically means you're against your old network. Parang right. that concept is just, it's hard but to grasp at the moment. Yeah. But yeah. ideally, you now knowing that, like I'm still a star magic artist and I'm yeah. a TV fan. Yeah. Like, like ideally, somehow that will change the stigma or the notion right. on that bars. I'm not really sure, but ideally, I think people are, are slowly getting used to the idea. I guess na hindi na controversial or hindi na para oh my god, what's going on? Speaking yeah. of TV five, so ilang mga a little over a month or almost two months na ba? Since, uh we started yeah <laughs> almost two months na rin. almost two months right um august 15 almost a month pa lang pala. almost a month oh so does it feel like two months but anyway um uh, <laughs> so it's like it feels like it's been weeks um so you you're a co-host for chica bash how how is it so far like the i mean it's first of all it's it's a new it's a different network and second of all it's a new role altogether right? Mm-hmm. It's so new. That? Yeah, a lot of things to learn still, a lot of things to improve on, a lot of room for improvement definitely. Uh, but I'm having fun. I'm blessed enough to have co-hosts that guide me through it every day, that encourage me. It's it's just a lot of work. Parang my brain <laughs> for the dialogue has been shut off for a little bit. So it's like, okay, trying to exercise that again. Because for five months, I was just at home. And my little siblings right. don't really speak Filipino so well. So parang life. Right. Right. <laughs> people know you, obviously, as an actress. Like, how, what, how did you prepare for the shift between acting on cam and then basically being yourself as a host on camera because pe- sometimes people don't understand the iba yun. Or, or or is it or is it different for you baka naman it's the same lang for you um hmm. it's it demands a different level of energy from how i am as a person so on that note there is still a little bit of acting involved because of right. like the, my energy as a person but aside from that it's it's a little bit actually if anything it's scary like when I you, when I do interviews like this, it's like it's so scary because it's like there's no role to protect me from who I am <laughs> as a person, and right. you see exactly how I am. And sometimes it's like, do I want to share that with the world because parang I'll be judged for it? But like, screw what they say, right. Yeah. Um, with the hosting lang though, the thing is, I'm still learning a lot about it. I think that's really what I'm struggling with because I didn't get to prepare for this right. as much as I would have wanted to. Parang everything just happened so fast. Star Magic asked me if I wanted to take the offer. I asked permission if I could do it. And then from the time I said yes, like a, a few days later, photo shoot na. So parang it was just, it all happened so fast. If anything, I'm learning as it, as we're going along and still a lot to learn. What drew you to the project? Um. Okay. I'm the kind of person who says yes to everything, to try everything, even at least once. Yeah. Na parang if it's not something I prepared for, like, okay, let's see, maybe. if Because if it's something that somebody saw I could do, maybe that means I could do it, right? Okay, Sometimes great. people see your possibilities more than you see it. So right. if something, like, I've, I've said yes to everything before. Like, right, even right. the pageantry, like, I trained for that. Like, as much as I didn't want to do it, it's like, see, yeah, let's see. If you think I can do it, and then I'll try, and then that did sit well with me. This one, man, so far... <laughs> Right. We're getting there. Like, so try lang nang try until you. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Cause like you're young, why why prevent yourself from new experiences at this point in your career, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, speak because you also mentioned it narin yung parang uh kumbaga sharing a part of yourself. You you express like there are times where you hesitate to 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 perhaps reveal parts of your life or parts of yourself, but um on social media. You are definitely not afraid to speak up, um, not just on political issues but societal issues, right? Uh, sa- san galing yun? I mean, kasi parang I know that that for the Gen Zers and for the younger and, and maybe like older millennials, it, it's almost natural. But I feel like sometimes in the entertainment industry, th- there is more more hesitation. 
I guess, as an industry to, oh, to reveal yeah. that part of people sometimes? Yeah, definitely. Like, the amount of followers I've lost for being so politically... Really? Yeah, you'd be surprised. But also, the amount of people din naman that think the same way. It's... Uh, hold on to that na lang. It's so much more enlightening. With me naman, the only reason why I speak up is because why? what else would I use my platform for, di ba? Not naman to share, like, every day what I'm doing. Like, oh, having a cup of coffee right now. Like, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Right. That's not how I'm wired, I think. And given the platform that I have, parang, it, these are issues that are, we should all be concerned about these issues. And I strongly believe that keeping ourselves aware and parang the platform is there to help educate and enlighten more than just to entertain, if that makes right. sense. Right. Parang that's how I see it. No, but I'm blessed enough to have the platform I do. Might as well use it for things that are of importance to me and that I think should also be important to others around me. Right. Right. Yes, that makes so much sense, Ria. Don't worry. Nalito ko yung ano mo eh. Tama mo yun. Tama yun. Um, but, but also, I wonder, kasi parang, you know, with, with more and more stars, I feel like, especially during quarantine, or maybe hindi lang namin napansin before, Pero parang mas napapansin namin na mas marami ng matapang, mas marami ng nagsasalita, um, kahit yung mga dati na tahimik lang or mas passive lang, pero mas marami ng mas proactive ngayon, no? Pero meron din kasing a lot of people are also quick to judge those who do, who may not be as opinionated or may not be as as loud as as other people or other stars. Like, how do you make sense of that also? I'm sure you see that on social media, right? Definitely, definitely. Um, I think kasi everybody has a different way of dealing with things. Everybody right. everybody has a different sense of normal. And everybody is fighting whatever it is we're fighting in a different way. As long as they're doing something to make sense of everything that's going on, I feel like that's okay. I don't think we should pressure people into speaking because right. they will do that when they're right. ready. Right. You know, to pressure somebody into speaking, they might say something that they don't like and then they wouldn't be able to stand up for what they said, diba? So what's the point in that? That but when right. you say something, you're 100% sure of it and whatever consequences may come after that, you're ready to take it on. So parang don't force people to speak. If anything, yeah. just like be a good source of valid and credible information. Mm-hmm. You know, yun nga, again, people are doing these things like, they say na parang so, social activism or whatever. There are those that will appear in rallies. There are those that will speak online. But there are right. also those who will just speak quietly to the their inner circle. Right. right. So parang, no matter how many people you speak to, that still matters. Because one way or another, you're still influencing somebody else. So to not be vocal in social media, I find it to be acceptable. Because if that's how you right. want to deal with things, and then you should be given that respect. Right, right. Yeah. Because levels of comfort din yun eh. But it's not always easy. Diba? Not, not a lot of people are as accustomed, perhaps, to yeah. the, the the vulnerability of social media. People tend to forget that. It's quite... They also it's forget that we're human behind the screen. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. <laughs> Sorry. Well, hi, I'm human also. I have feelings. I'm not a robot. Like... Right. I feel like, especially, I think, for celebrities, people tend to forget that you aren't... Like, alam mo yun, you're not just that image that they see on camera or that they see on social media. But, yeah. but, I, th- but I think to a fault, kasi people sometimes look at celebrities and they're like, oh, okay, parang she's up there in that pedestal and I can say whatever I want to say to her. And she she will be unbothered by that. Yun nga, I feel like there's a sense of ownership. Mm-hmm. I mean, if anything, we... we artists wouldn't be where we are then man if we weren't recognized by these people so to a certain extent i feel like i get where they're coming from right but also you know they just tend to forget that we're human also and i think that's where the issue lies right na, when a person becomes when an artist becomes a little bit too human for them they tend to like oh whoa, wait this person's a person pala. right but yeah uh-huh. i feel like that's just part of it all yeah how do you deal with that? Because, I mean, like, you're, you're no stranger naman to the limelight. Um, but, but how do you deal with not just the, not just the attention, eh, pero parang yun nga, the, the tendency of people online to, like, perhaps presume things about you or perhaps to yun nga, disregard the humanity sometimes, ironically, of, of the people they look up to? Uh, it's a lot of work, really. 
because they but i really just take things day by day because there are days where i'm affected by it there are right. days where i choose not to be affected by it and i think it's really just that mind over matter kind of thing like it's a mentality it's uh mind setting setting your mind to focus on the things that you have to be grateful for mm -hmm. if that makes sense because when you yeah. realize that there's so many things that even the simple smell of coffee in the morning you know what i mean <laughs> Yeah. Like that simple thing, it's something to be grateful for. Kahit na, there are people who don't agree with you, there are people who don't like you, like you're still blessed. Right, right, right. Okay, um, you brought this up earlier during the pre-interview and I thank you for this because I, was, I wasn't I was very sure if you'd be comfortable with me. Oh um, my God, no. <laughs> I should have figured it now. This is something that you want to talk about. Okay, so speaking of, of, of using your platform for, for things that matter to you and matter to the country, um, we the youth vote. Like how, how did you got got na ba? How did you get involved in that project in the first place? Um okay. When everything happened kasi, throughout the quarantine, like the handling of our situation, the handling of ABS-CBN. I became extra vocal about right. my dissent because more than ever, my network needed me and more than ever, our country needed people to speak up for it, diba? Um, And then I, direct the net down eh. She's really like the one that pieced everybody together. I really just told her direct, if there's anything that we can do about voters' education and registration, because I feel like that's where our problem lies also as a country. Yeah. Um, history has proven that we haven't exactly made the best choices in terms of electing our public servants. Right. So I feel like if we address that root issue, there's there could be good things that could come out of this. So there, I really just approached her and said that I'm willing to help in any way. And then there, eventually, I ended up being part of the team that's really convenient for it. And yeah. Right. Yeah, because it's right. I feel like a lot of younger people know what's wrong or they know that something is wrong, but kulang ng follow through perhaps. I don't know why. Maybe I think, no I one think has thought it, them. No, it's not that. I feel like it's not that no one has thought them. I think they know, but they don't know what to do. Mm, okay. Even with voting, they know they have to vote, but before right. that, they don't know how to register. Or they're discouraged by people around them because of the stigma on voting. Because right. people feel like, you know, like you question, like, would my vote really matter compared to the, right. the numbers outside? But I don't think the youth, like our age group, I don't think we realize how powerful we are in terms of numbers. Because statistically, 40 million youth voters are eligible for the 2022 elections. Yeah. So imagine, like, the power of that collective vote. Right. Right. Considering we're the ones who see things the way we do, like-minded individuals, you know what I mean? Right. So right. That, I, I think that's where our campaign is working around. It's really encouraging the youth to use their voices. It's not even like um, vote for this person, vote for that person. No, it's really just go out there, do your responsibility, um, accept the right that you have to vote, and then um, vote for the people that you believe fit the mold of what there should be right what, what what like what does the campaign involve exactly Para for people who might not be familiar yet with what we the youth vote does it's um it's a youth camp it's a campaign cap not capitalizing the man but um, <laughs> focusing on the power of the youth vote and the power of the youth collectively um we really just aim to get more young people to register and then eventually to vote right. it's really just that like just maintaining the democracy in our country really because right. it's our and also parang to reiterate the fact that the right to suffrage doesn't only go in terms of voting there's also the right to be voted for right. and i feel like now is the time more than ever to have more people our age start right. taking our place i guess because right. this is right. the inherit to begin with this is right. uh, we are the future i mean jose Rizal always says "Nah, the youth is the future of the country i think this right. is the time for us to not fail him diba? right i i wonder though like i mean because you, you you're involved in this organization in this in this effort but do you still feel though that sometimes 
the general population still diminishes or looks down on what the youth has to say. Or do you personally experience that? Na parang ano ba? Sino ba sinagpinagsasabi mo? Bata ka lang naman. Parang, do you still oh, get that nowadays? Oh, oh naman. Definitely. Especially like when I post something and then mm-hmm. our mga, yung mga titang mahilig sa fake news, di ba? They'd be like, Chris, wala ka namang alam. Bata ka lang. Like, do you know the power of the youth these days? We have yeah. like unlimited access to information. Ayun nga lang, a lot of fake news also and fake information. Right. It's really just a matter of discerning. Oh, that's something also we want to address with We the Youth Vote. It's um, helping people discern more right. when it comes to our sources. Yeah, but anyway. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I think hindi na mawawala yun. It's societal norms. Right. And I think it's also up to our generation to make sure that the next generation doesn't have to deal with that kind of belittling of the youth. Right. You realize that children aren't, even, like with this whole quarantine thing, the kids are so wow. Oh, which is also why Save the Children is an organization I'm like aligned with because I strongly believe that we have to take care of the children mm-hmm. for the future of our country in right. all aspects. Right. Okay, speaking of um, media literacy and misinformation, um, what should people keep in mind though? Like, okay, it's established that, you know, if if you're if it's within your level of comfort if you're if it's within your level of comfort go ahead and speak out if you can um in whichever platform that you want online offline wherever uh but what 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 tips i don't know if tips is even the right word but for people who might already have these thoughts brewing in their heads they have presumably informed opinions like what tips do you have for people for younger people especially who might still not have you know the the courage to 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 say what they want to say um start with figuring out what your stands are on certain things okay and really i strongly recommend that you guys read up on issues before you say anything right and consult with people that you think would be more knowledgeable when it comes to the topic at hand right and you don't have to start immediately by going public and going on social media, but at least start with your inner circle Mm -hmm. because even that small circle is already you showing your influence. Like you don't have to have a thousand followers to be an influencer. You are are an influencer even within your family in the circle of your friends. Right, right, yeah. I like that, ask questions and Influence no, who you can influence. influence. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah and I, I, I think a lot of people are are afraid of asking questions. I think it's an ego thing. Sorry, it's a Filipino thing. I think it's an ego thing. Like we don't. Oh yeah. Like, it's, 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 I think. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Go 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 go. I, I think go. it's also a factor of people are afraid of being called um stupid or being called bobo, as if asking questions. Oh, the weather just disagreed with people calling other people Bobo. But, but, but I think it's also a factor of people thinking that if you ask questions, as if tanga ka na, or as if wala ka ng karapata. Parang alam mo yun? Parang, yeah. as if hanggang dun na yun. Parang. I, I don't think people realize that asking questions just means that you're trying to learn more about it. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to learn about things. It does take a level of humility, I guess, and uh, a level of lowering your pride. But yeah. you have nothing to lose by asking questions. Okay. Like, oh, why, why I think people are dumb for asking questions, really. I <laughs> Keep that in mind, guys. Hindi, hindi masamang magtanong. As in, to borrow from... Um... <laughs> Susan Rosses, wag maghihiyang magtanong. <laughs> exactly. There's nothing wrong with asking questions. So, um, Ria, thank you for your time. Um, if they want to catch you on TV or online, if they want to engage with you nicely and respectfully, where can they follow you and catch you on television? Respectfully, gusto natin yan. Um, that's at Ria on Instagram, at Ria Atayde on Twitter, and on Laika, and we the youth vote on Kumu, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We the youth vote, yes. Okay, and on TV, what time? Kamesh, Mondays through Fridays at 10 a.m. on TV5. Okay, thank you again so much for your time. Um, sa totoo lang, I've been wanting to 
The weather is not cooperating with this, I know. With this Raptor Talk interview. But I've, I've been wanting to talk to you for the longest time. Because like, oh, wow. yeah, exactly, like, um, I think we, I, I appreciate or we appreciate, you know, like, um, exactly you, you using your platform for what you believe in. So thank you for your time. Um, catch okay. Ria on social. She mentioned it earlier and on TV, on TV5. And if you're watching this, please don't be afraid to ask questions. Read up. Speak out if you're comfortable enough speaking out and register to vote. Thank you for watching Rappler. Bye.